Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator, and it is my pleasure to uh, give another video on the process project, which is something that um, I am enjoying because it gives me a sense of how authors on the other side of things put their text together, and then also to celebrate how narrators such as myself or my guest, Tiana Holly, put uh, things together on our side of things. So we have a book called The River Twice, from which uh, Tiana has read. And um, I'm just going to ask, Tiana, what was it like to tackle this particular piece and this uh, genre, which is science fiction? Um, well, the piece is wonderful, and I really enjoyed reading through it. Uh, science fiction is new to me. I haven't actually narrated any science fiction. And so that was really exciting to really dig into finding the cadence and the voice um, within the text and difficult to find the right cadence and voice. And when you say difficult, what uh, what do you think uh, what do you think you struggle with when uh, when it comes to sci-fi? What makes that uh, unique as a as a genre for you? There's something kind of difficult for me to put my finger on that that makes a science fiction and fantasy distinctly different other than just the fact that it's about something that could potentially happen and something that's fantastical and magical. Um, I think that within, you know, fantasy has its own rhythm. Romance has its own rhythm. I think sci-fi has a rhythm. And since I haven't had the opportunity to really practice and play in that, it's not a rhythm that I, I'm comfortable with yet. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's probably where the difficulty comes from, finding that rhythm and doing it naturally. Right, right, right. Um, uh, sort of, um, you know, what I, uh, when I uh, coached uh, actors in theater who are fairly new to just being on the stage, and, you know, if, if we take that to be like, you know, the rhythm of just one form of acting, um, I say, you know, hey, um, uh, once you've once you've gone through a production, I don't care if you were the lead or the spear carrier. Once you've gone through a production, then you know there is just this sense when I see you uh, doing an audition that you are in a place where you feel like you belong and you're doing just what you know you need to do uh, in that space. And yeah, I mean it can be it can be daunting. Um, and also as an author, I certainly would appreciate your sensitivity to uh, to the terrain of um, of a of a new genre. It means that you're really truly engaged with the text. And if you're um, having a, a slightly um, uncomfortable first date with it, then it means that you are just you know you are truly invested. Um, so um, what uh, what else uh, did you find while working on this? Well, <clears throat> pardon me. The, the text starts with exposition and then moves into um, this really interesting, tense, but uh, funny scene um, with a time traveler. And for me, his voice was Scottish, very clearly. Mm -hmm. And so, and I love doing that accent. Me too. Um, I've done it more in a feminine voice, so getting to do it in a in a masculine voice was really exciting. Hmm. Um, so that that play because I knew he he has just this um really jovial attitude about him, hmm. even though he finds himself in the middle of a very tense situation. He's just pleased to be there. Hmm. Um, so being excited to do that accent and mm. what was coming with that, with that character kind of helped pull me through the more difficult part of, um, I'm not going to say master, trying to master the, um, the momentum and the rhythms that I was, that I was trying to do with the beginning. Mm. And I think that I, I had a lot of fun with that play and that character. And isn't it isn't it a wonderful gift uh, when authors give you strong characters that can you know can help anchor you in uh, in the world of uh, something that may be uh, completely different and uh, you know uh, a world that is sometimes for me anyway completely daunting when when it's like my goodness the author has imagined this whole landscape that I'm getting to know ah 
but here are some people that I do feel like I know and I'm comfortable inside their skin. So now uh, they're going to just cradle me and, and carry me through this this landscape. Um, you know, you brought up uh, when we were chatting before a particular challenge uh, that that uh, that came up uh, when it came to suddenly, uh, you know, going into the Scottish accent. Would you mind sharing that? Yes, um, I just didn't wrap a book that was um, in Haitian Creole, and I had to learn that accent for that book. Um, and I did not realize, but apparently I have gotten some muscle memory. So when I switch out of my native dialect, that's where my mouth wants to go. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I love the Scottish. So when I switched to the Scottish and it very quickly morphed, I was very confused because it's not a difficult accent for me. Mm. Um, and I know that it is for some, but it's something that I've, I've worked in for years. And um, so it's, it's something that typically I can go into very easily. So that has made me realize that I may want to find some sort of local palate cleanser mm. to help me um, when I learn a new accent and then want to be able to reset my mouth to, um, go into a different one because there's there's a lot I don't know how much you want to go me to go into it but with the, the mouth placement and the back front sides mm -hmm. to sides and having the wrong mouth placement you do everything else correctly it is a completely different sound so mm -hmm. I realized maybe I need to find something to help me go back to a neutral place or my neutral place yeah yeah well you know it's uh uh, what it reminds me of is one of our uh, great cinematic chameleons, uh, Gary Oldman, actually hired a tutor to help him get back to his just regular voice um, after after several projects. Um, so um, it's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, well, Tiana, um, uh, I'm going to play folks uh, a sample of your uh, narration alongside the text. And uh, everybody, this is The River Twice. Enjoy. Chapter One Kella did not need to look at her phone while texting, so she actually saw it happen. One moment the road in front of the car was more or less clear, except for Pompet's standard killer gridlock. The monumental stone triumphal arch commemorating her grandfather dominated the traffic circle they were stuck in. Then, flicking into existence like a special effect movie, was a totally odd man. In a long black coat and tall hat, he looked something like a young Abraham Lincoln. Chalky slammed on the brakes, flinging all the passengers against the plexiglass panel that separated the limo's front and back seats. Azu ebop, he swore. Car horns blared. Her middle-aged maid, Nana, clucked warningly. Kala keyed, and dropped the shiny insect green phone into her backpack. Wow! Did you hit him? Almost in the moment of stopping, her personal bodyguard, Mr. Leah, was out of the front seat, his right hand inside the front of his dark blue suit jacket. The khaki-clad cops in charge of herding the traffic around the monument circle leaped into action, blowing whistles and waving other cars to pass around them. Drivers leaned on their horns, or powered down their windows to curse in lurid Jalenese profanity that Kala was not supposed to know. At the sight of the limo and Mr. Leah, the cops milled in confusion. Kala hopped out, too, so that things would stay calm. It's me, officers, she said with a smile. In her light blue school uniform and blazer, she looked quite undangerous. Miss Eng, it's Kala Eng. Nervous grins and nods of greeting met her all around. Miss Kala, Mr. Lee said in a voice of steel. This may be a kidnapping attempt. Please get back in the car. Although he was neither tall nor wide, he seemed to become both in effort to shield her from possible gunfire. Kala ignored this, and so did Nana, who followed her. Her job was to be the mother hen and stay with Kala at all times when she wasn't at home or safe in school. Who is this guy? Kala asked. He's not Jalenese. Definitely he's not, Nana said. Look at him. He's a foreigner. An American, maybe. Does he speak American? Two cops were frisking the stranger, patting him down for weapons and yelling at him in Jalenese. The hat had fallen off, rolled into the next lane, and gotten squashed by a truck. English was a popular second language in Jalenese secondary schools, 
but probably none of the cops were fluent in any language but their own. Let me try, Kala said. Switching to English, she said loudly, Hello, how are you? Thank the Lord, the stranger exclaimed. It was English, all right, but heavily accented in a way she could not identify. Lassie, what is this place? He rolled bright blue eyes at her, but was unable to move, surrounded by cops. You're in the center of Pompet, which is the capital of the Southeast Asian nation of Jelanesia, Kella said, taking care to speak clearly. Who are you? And where are you from? How did you get here? To her surprise, and everyone else's discomfiture, the foreigner threw up lanky black-clad arms and yelled, I did it! Proof! Proof positive! Ha ha! Darwin will never live this down! He's been wrong all this time, and I'm right. For a moment or two, he twirled in place like a black windmill before the cops pinned him again. Sunstruck, Nana diagnosed. Look how red he is. We had better get him into the cool. A foreign maniac, probably a terrorist, Mr. Leah said, also in Jalanese. Jail. There are high-security cells in the basement at the police headquarters. With swift expert hands, Mr. Leah emptied out the stranger's pockets. While he did this, Kala said in English, What is your name, sir? Your country? Reverend Josiah Garment Regsland, at your service, miss. I am a subject of the Queen, a citizen of the British Empire. He was grinning so joyfully, he hardly seemed to notice being manhandled. What year is this, lass? Eh, I can tell it is not 1867. 1867? You were kidding, right? It's 2010. Suddenly, Kala really saw him. The funny long dark coat, the flowing mane of crisply curled reddish hair and clownish sideburns, the way he gaped at the cars and the neon, the thick black shoes. Oh my gosh. Switching to Jalenese, she rapped out. Mr. Leah, show me what's in his pockets. And that was The River Twice, the sample narrated by Tiana Holly. Uh, Tiana, thank you so much for uh, joining today. Um, my name is Matt Haynes, and as your narrators, I'm sure I can speak for the both of us, uh, I hope that our voices and your ears meet again real soon.